Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Um, I'm a little washed out today. I think the light is a little bit weird, but that's okay. We're just gonna go with it. Um, yeah, sorry, it's been two weeks because I got sick last week or and busy, so I wasn't that sick. You can probably hear that I'm congested, but not that badly. Um, mostly I was just busy because of church music stuff, <laughs> as usual. Uh, but look, I finished this green cardigan and put buttons on it and it's very long. I'll stand up so you can see how long it is. Like it, oh, you can also see that I alternated skeins here if you look really closely, but I try not to uh, do that. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm really excited about it and I think it, um, it fits really well. The sleeves are in the right length. It's the right size that I want. Like it's kind of oversized and longer. Um, it is very cozy. Um, yesterday I wore it to church and somebody in my choir was like, oh my gosh, can you make me one of those? And I was like, yeah, maybe, we'll see. Um, so <laughs> took a long time. Uh, maybe, we'll see. Um, but anyway, here we are two weeks later. I have finally released my Mary Bennett sock pattern. <laughs> um, that was just like a whole thing because uh, Jordan and I were both kind of sick and just busy. Um, so she and I finally sat down last night, did all the final edits and I put it on Ravelry. So my Mary Bennett socks, uh, which I talked about last time and I should have brought one of them with me, but it is downstairs. Um, I'll go get it. I'll go get it later because I have to stop this at some point anyway to insert another video um, that I took last week. <laughs> so I'll like show you them later. But if you want to buy my Mary Bennett socks, I will put the link up here um, so that you can just like click it, the link and it'll take you right to Ravelry. Um, and if you can also see my other sock patterns there um, if you want to buy those. I um, released the Mary Bennett pattern uh, now, like it wasn't like in order, like of the ones that I designed in uh, for the challenge that I did a couple years ago, but I knitted a sample of the Mary Bennett socks in Garth and Snowdonia last year, and the Woolly Thistle now has Garth and Snowdonia again, so I was like, oh, I should release this pattern, and then they can, people can actually get the yarn. Um, so if you want to knit the Mary Bennett socks in Garth and Snowdonia, you can do that. You can get the yarn I'll put a link to the um woolly thistle up here to um the to the snowdonia I have an affiliate link with the woolly thistle so please find that in the description box um it's like right at the top of the description box um like right under all my social media stuff and like what I'm wearing um there it says my affiliate link with TWT I get a small percentage if you use my link so if you click that first and then you can like click on more links or you can um just like search from there then um, that supports me and my channel. So thank you. Um, and Snowdonia is great. It's 75% Romney and 15, no, 25% Hebridean. So you get a little bit of the like um, really rich kind of darker um, natural colors of the sheep from the Hebridean, which is like really dark brown sheep. And then a Romney is like gray, white, you know, it's like a whiter, like light brown kind of cream color usually. So um yeah, they're very woolly. It's 100% wool, um, but I've knitted a couple of pairs of socks in Snowdonia, um, and I've never had a problem with the fact that it's 100% wool. Like, I've never worn a hole in them. Um, yeah, it's strong. Like, I don't think that the ply is that tight, but the twist in the actual yarn is pretty strong. So, like, in a in each individual ply, it's two-ply yarn. So, you shouldn't have any trouble. Um, unless you have, like, a super high arch or something, and you wear through your the ball, like, on the balls of your feet or on the heels or something. Um, you should be fine. So... Those are out, finally. Um, and I will have another pattern coming out in like the next couple of weeks. Um, that's a color work pattern um, that I showed last time. It's a, a Shetland cowl, like it goes around your neck once and it has a Mobius twist. Um, it's called the Natalie cowl. I named it after my grandmother because I gave my first sample to her. Um, so uh, that will be coming out. Um, maybe I'll put a picture of it. I'll put a picture of it here. I don't know which side it goes on. I can never remember, but here's a picture of my grandma wearing the cowl. Um, she is very beautiful. She is 86 years young and rocks my knitwear because it's very cold in Alberta where she lives. <laughs> this is like the most hipster Vermont thing I've ever done is drink my water out of a humongous ball jar. Um, if you've ever been to Vermont, you know that people like use these as drinking vessels like almost exclusively <laughs> so i'm trying to stay hydrated because i run a lot um i had to take kind of a little bit of a break. i had a light running week last week um, because i was not feeling super well the whole week i was sniffly um but this week all better 
Um, I didn't get tired on my run today, so that was good. Um, anyway, yeah, I haven't done like a ton of knitting because I've had two huge weeks of church music, um, but <laughs> I have done some knitting and spinning. <laughs> So, uh, obviously I sewed the button. This was not knitting, but I sewed the buttons on this cardigan and that felt tremendous. Um, but I finished this cowl actually. So this was the hand spun cowl that I showed last time. Uh, the white is not hand spun. The white here is Knit Picks palette and just white. The Knit Picks palette is hundred percent Pervian Highland wool. It's very inexpensive. Um, you can tell I'm sniffly still. And it comes in like 150 colors. So if you're looking for like a budget Fair Isle yarn, someone actually commented on my last video and asked me what I thought about Nipix palette. I have a lot of it. Um, I don't use it that often because I just like have the you know wall of Shetland yarn there that I usually use if I'm going to knit something like in this Fair Isle style. But I actually kind of want to use this palette. Like I have a huge thing of it and like it's like kind of overflowing and I'm like, oh, I need to use this. Um, and like a ton of colors that, you know, Monica and I used to buy palette when we were making mittens like the very first year of grad school when we were like lonely and sad and we made mittens all the time in these like crazy patterns um, at very, very, very fine gauges. It was funny, we were out for dinner the other night after mass with somebody else in the choir and it's a composer that um, lives in her neighborhood and um, we were talking about it and Monica was like, oh my gosh, I have some. And she had this pair of mittens in her pocket, in her coat pocket that I had knitted for her like all the way back in 2018 probably um and she because she keeps a pair of mittens in the pocket of every coat I love that she does that's so brilliant I should do that but she because she gets really cold and it was the pair that I had made because I had made them and then she like saw that I was knitting them this was like March or April of that first year of grad school and she was like I want these and I was like okay but they weren't done yet and I was like okay but you can't have them till Christmas <laughs> and then she like forgot she forgot about them and I gave them to her for Christmas that year and she was so shocked and she's like ah and they were really beautiful they actually had like a very similar palette to this they were white with the like the yarn that I used was like a very variegated um um like blue and, and purple and teal anyway this uh is un yet unnamed but I like this a lot so this is the style of cowl that goes just I'll put it on in a second but it just pops right over your head and it's lined with um wool and mohair held together like fingering weight yarn and uh mohair silk yarn held double um I ran out of this gray so I had to finish it in blue <laughs> but that's fine no one can see it and it looks pretty and it's fun so it just pops right over your head like that and it's really snuggly you can wear it inside if you wanted to um obviously like just if you're freezing indoors but it's really for like walking around outside when it's cold you can pull it down so that people can see your beautiful face or you can pull it up over your nose and it stays pretty like it's not super um structured like if I knit this with like a lining that was Shetland wool or something like or similar to the outside which is hand spun Cheviot um and two ply Cheviot and then knitbooks palette in white which is Peruvian Highland wool it's also two ply like that wouldn't be quite as stiff as Shetland wool but it would be pretty like that would stay up really well this will slouch a little bit but it's like tight enough that it will stay up if you pull it over your face like that so I used um four different colors of this hand spun rainbow fade that I did for a cowl that I made last year that I don't have because I gave it to Monica um I also used white Knit Picks palette for the background of that and this I was really excited to block because if you watched my last video I talked about how it felt like the hand spun and the palette like because it was color work and I don't know like sometimes it's just like when you knit yarn before blocking it just feels kind of angry like I was talking about how cables are angry when you um it's the word that I like to use the metaphor that I like um before you block them because they're all crunched scrunched up or whatever and then when you block it they kind of relax so I knew that would happen when I blocked this and it really did and it looks so much better now <laughs> um so the way that I did this is that I knitted a tube uh, of the outside and then I switched to actually I think I used bigger needles for the inside but I decreased the number of stitches I used like one size or two sizes bigger needles for the inside but I decreased the number of stitches by a third um because I did I did one last year where I decreased it by half and that was too like it was kind of too small um it was a little too tight so I tried a third and this is a much better fit so I will write this pattern at some point probably this year but um my color work pattern coming out soon is not this it's the 
<laughs> the one I made for my grandma, the Natalie Cowell. So this one is yet unnamed. <laughs> but I used the book Selbu Patterns to design it, um, which is a great book if you were looking for just like a bunch of charts of Selbu knitting patterns, like Selbu Norwegian charts. Those are it's like that book has all of our charts. The Selbu Mittens pattern has like singular, like charts that you can like place on like a yoke or like I always put them on little coffee cup cozies um that I tend to make for everyone I know and um yeah those are great books um so yeah last time I was talking about how I was super proud that I didn't cast on the traveler cowl by Andrea Mowry <laughs> because I had too many other things to do and I wanted to finish this first so I waited until I was finished with this and then I made the traveler cowl with the other half of the rainbow fade that I used for the thing that I made this rainbow fade for but so I used the cool colors in this and then I used the warm colors minus the yellow because I didn't need it in the traveler cowl and it's not blocked yet we're sewn together so I can show it to you um but I love this <laughs> sorry that's the back side you don't want to see all the ends this is the nice neat side so it is knitted starting in this corner and then you work your way basically down like this on the bias and then it goes around your neck like that it gets sewn together um, and it's like a bandana. It's really easy to style. So yeah, I did this and then I, I have another cowl. It's called the inclinations cowl. It's the one I couldn't remember the name of last time. And I had that and I put it on the other day, um, to leave the house to go somewhere. And my roommate was like, oh my gosh, that's like the coolest thing ever. Like, it's like a bandana. Like you don't have to like zhuzh it and stuff. It just pops over your head. And I was like, yeah, do you want one? I just literally just made one and it's upstairs waiting to get blocked. And she was like, are you serious? And I was like, I literally just made one. Uh, so Jordan's going to get this. <laughs> um, but it is that, yeah. So the pink skein had a lot of red in it. So I didn't fade the pink at all, but then, cause it had like, I didn't alternate it or anything, but then I alternated the red. I did a little bit of red and then I started alternating the red and orange until the red ran out. And then I used orange for like the bottom bit. And the fade worked pretty well. Um, I am pretty happy with it. Um, I've done much worse jobs with fades before. So I think it's pretty cool. It would have been like even more even if I had alternated the pink and the red. But again, there's like, look at that huge red stripe that's just in the pink. Like that was all one pink skein. So anyway, yeah. But I loved knitting this. Um, and I said this last time, but like I have a lot of um, skeins of hand spun in here um that are like actually I haven't weighed this I should weigh this I will go downstairs and weigh this when I stop this video to show you my because I have to stop this and then put in another uh, bit that again you'll hear about this in a second um that I filmed last week but I will go weigh this and I'll tell you how much it weighs but um I have a lot of skeins of hands but then I think are like the, about the correct weight to knit one of these like that I could knit um this cowl and so like I said last time, I really liked this and I think that I will knit more. I did eventually memorize the stitch pattern. It wasn't that complicated. Um, it's like a little bit annoying to memorize it, but once I figured it out, then great. Um, and I also, so I really like the Traveler series. So I'm also doing a spin for the Traveler shawl. Um, and I am doing it in the suggested way of a three ply of three different colors of dyed braids. So as I showed you last time, this is the first one. This is a Bergschaft top that I spun, that I dyed, like a kind of a cranberry and pink and amethyst and stuff. I like this one. Um, the other two were from Hello Yarn. Um, so one of them is, well, I'll just show you this because the bobbin is on the matchless. Um, this is the second one. So I'm almost done with this. This is the last bit of the Ramboulet top from Hello Yarn and the colorway Fading Light from November. Oh my gosh, the December and January ones, I stopped it after January, I'm not gonna get any, but like the December, January ones have still not arrived and I ordered something else to my office like a, a couple weeks ago and it never arrived. So I like, it was, but it was from a yarn company that's really small. And so I emailed them to be like, can you just check on this order? And they were like, yeah, that came back to us, like return to sender. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's terrifying. Like there might be like some yarn or like fiber that I'd never get because it got returned to like Hello Yarn or something because they didn't know where to deliver it on campus. Like that had, that never happened before like the fall and now it keeps happening. And I'm like, where? So I have to send all my packages to Knitten now. <laughs> but I feel bad because it was Monica's birthday present and they did ship it. They reshipped it, um, which was nice of them. 
And so I hopefully will be here by this weekend, but Monica's 30th birthday is this weekend and I really wanted to give her this yarn. Um, so that will be sad, but it's fine. Anyway, and then the third, the third one is this. We've got Ghosts Merino. So this is like kind of got the yellow in it and some brown and like a little bit of like pinky colors. So I think these three will go really well together. Hopefully it's enough yarn, like enough yardage. I think it probably will be. Um, because I spin a pretty thin single. Like, I don't think I will have a problem. It's like, it's just like 800 something yards. And I was like, yeah, I think I can do 800 yards in a four ounce or hundred gram top pretty easily with one top. And then it's three plied together. And so you have, that would be your total yardage if you plied them all together ish. I guess you must lose some in plying because of the twist. <laughs> I always like, forget about things like physics when I am like thinking about knitting and I'm like I don't know how this works but like it does but I don't actually know how many yardage how many yards is like on the bobbin versus how many yards go into the finished skein and then you wash the skein and it will probably shrink again because you've washed it and like especially Grambula is like really bouncy so that's gonna be interesting to see but you won't know unless you try. So I could like be really experimental about it and like spin a, a big bobbin and then like wind that on a knitting audience and see how many yards it is or run it through my yardage counter, which I also have. It just doesn't have batteries. So I've never actually used it. Um, and then like do a finished skein and see like how many yards that is and how many I lost. But uh, that's something for Nitten to do because I taught him how to spin. Um, I sort of taught, I basically was like, here, you can use my e-spinner. I need to give him the wheel. I don't want to hang, hang out with Gertrude anymore. She's taking up too much space here. Monica's wheel is named Gertrude. She's right over there behind the matchless, behind Thelma. Almost the most expensive thing I own after my car. Fun fact. I might have said that before on this channel, but I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so yeah. What else? Um, yeah, so I knitted that. Anyway, anyway, I am going to knit the Traveler hoodie also. Now that I've knitted this hoodie, this hood is so big. Now that I've knitted this hoodie, which is the Long Road hoodie, I should have said that, by Meiju KP from the book Contrasts, published by Lina, which you can probably get at the Woolly Thistle. Maybe not. Sometimes they have, like, they'll always have those books when they come out, but they don't always have a back stock. But the book is right here. If you want to see it. This is Contrasts. And the Long Road pullover is on the cover. So you can get this from Lina Publishing or your local yarn store if they sell Lina Publications or the Woolly Thistle if they have this in stock. But I'm also going to knit the Traveler hoodie because I was really excited about that. And I got all this Targi at Rhinebeck. I got a pound and a half because it comes in half pound, huge, like giant loops. There's this one place where I always get roving when I'm at Rhinebeck and it's really inexpensive, it's all undyed and I like to dye it myself. So I don't really mind. Um, and this, I'm just going to sit here and braid it because it, then it will take up less space and it's now fully dry. So this is the first half pound of Targi, um, that I dyed baby blue and I wanted it to be kind of like, a um, not like solid <laughs> tonal. That's the word. I wanted it to be tonal. So I soaked the wool in citric acid with the water before I put it in the dye pot, which makes it take up the dye a little bit less evenly. Um, and then you don't have to add citric acid usually when it reaches the summer point. So that was convenient. Um, it just like soaks up all the dye and then you just turn off the stove. Um, oh, hello, you're all tangled. I made roving barf, look, of course I did. If anyone could make yarn barf out of roving, it would be me clumsiest person on earth. Okay. Ah, this is ridiculous. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So they come in half pound bumps. <laughs> uh, said the word bump. I think it was to Maggie recently. And she's like, like a drug bump. And I was like, yeah, like a drug bump, <laughs> but it's fiber. Although I think a bump is like 22 pounds or something like officially, but I just will call it a bump of fiber if it's like a lot. <laughs> So anyway, I got a pound and a half bump of Targi. Well, three technically separate ones. And I'm, I can't put it all in one dye pot because that's a pound and a half of fiber is a lot. That's a, a lot, like very heavy. So I dyed the first one. I have to do the other two. Um, this is a very long-term project. This is like, I don't even know if I'm going to spin this by the end of this year. 
<laughs> uh, we'll see. Because I'll probably, yeah, it's it's going to be like a long-term thing. And I'm going to want to probably like spin from the different, each different braid like evenly-ish to like make the color pool as randomly as possible. That's not like that hard, but you know, it'll occupy Thelma for a very long time. I might have to use the e-spinner for this because the bobbins are eight ounces, which is twice the size of the four ounce bobbins on Thelma. So Louise is the e-spinner. So, but Nitten has Louise right now, but I'm going to have to, I'm not really like in a rush to ply anything right now because I just don't really have time to spin that much. Like, this is what I realized. I was thinking about this the other day. I think I'm going to write a blog post about this, which I haven't done in a couple weeks because I've been busy um, and I forgot. <laughs> Classic. But I realized, like, okay, I learned how to spin in 2022, like around like September. And it took me a while to kind of just get the hang of it. Um, and I really liked learning how to spin. I think I found it really enjoyable. Um, I wanted to do it all the time. I used Monica's wheel, Gertrude, and then I got Thelma, and I got Louise. Um, now I have Felicity, but I don't really use Felicity that much. Um, I did spin a lot when I was like learning wool and style when I got when I got Felicity, like in November, but um, that's kind of petered off. I think I need to do some wool and spinning on Thelma and see how that goes. Um, although the Saxony wheel is easier because you can like pull your hand back. Like you can sit in a different position with a single, at least you only need to use one foot to treadle. It's like a whole thing, but it is... Because Andrea Mowry always talks about how she had to get the, she got a shack flat iron to learn how to do wool and spinning. And I was like, oh, it's a good, I, like, why would you need that? But then I realized it's because you need two feet for a matchless. Even, I mean, I think I could probably treadle with one foot on the matchless because I have a single treadle because the matchless that I have is from 1988. But, um, so they didn't update the, it to be a du dual double treadle for a long time after that. You can actually get them, um, you can like send it to Shacked and they'll like make it into a double treadle for you, but it costs like half as much as a Shack matchless new would cost. And I'm like, why would I need that? Um, so, but then like, I realized like I spent a lot of 2023 spinning. Like I did, I spun all the time. I spun on the real wheel. I spun on the electric wheel. I spun all the time. I was really into it. And I knitted a lot of stuff in 2023, but I was much more like, well, I was also I, I came out of my church music retirement in 23, so I was really busy driving all the time. So I was a little bit, like, I was spreading my myself thinner than normal because I was doing spinning and knitting and church music stuff all the time outside of work. So, like, I had less, I don't know, I but I focused a lot of my attention on spinning last year. And this year, um, I've just noticed that, like, probably one of the reasons is that my wheels are just in the studio and I'm here. Like I live my sleep right there. So like it's right here. If I want to sit down for 20 minutes, it's a lot easier. It's just like, I find myself now feeling like I'm going to sit down for 20 minutes and spin and like work through these spins, like over like the course of a few weeks rather than like, I need to spin for two hours a day. Um, maybe that's because I'm better at it. I don't know. Maybe it's because yeah, like probably just like the act feels more familiar I feel like I'm spinning more consistently over like multiple days or what multiple weeks or whatever, but I'm just like in a lot less of a hurry with spinning. I also have a lot of hand spun yarn that I like haven't used case in point. So I think that my drive to spin is like a little bit just like, like I want to spin every day, but I don't want to spin for two hours anymore. Like I would like to like distribute my time more evenly and like, I don't need the hand spun to knit with it. So like, I've realized, like, I think I've just kind of, like, settled, which is probably healthy. <laughs> um, so, anyway. Um, spinning is, like, slower, but, like, that's okay. I feel, it feels a lot more intentional. Um, and I like that. It's, like, I sit down for 15 or 20 minutes, two or three times a day to spin. And that's actually a lot of spinning, but it's, like, I don't get burnt out. It's just kind of, like, a way to clear my head. Um, I don't know if other spinners feel this way. Like, I really feel like spinning is very like meditative for me. I mean, so usually I'm watching something, but like sometimes I don't, I just like silence and I sit at the wheel and I watch it spin. And it's like, so it's like almost, it's not hypnotizing, but it's kind of like almost like hypnotizing. Like you can just kind of like get into this flow and just like, whew. so anyway, um, yeah, my spinning has been like a little bit, not on the back burner, just like it's, it's, it's constantly in the background more. So I guess the back burner, but like it's there. Um, yeah, so that's fun. Okay, I want to talk about socks now. Because it's February. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw, I po well, I posted a story of 
when I opened the February socks. Um, if you haven't heard the story, I um, had my friends over for my birthday and I had them all, like I brought my humongous sack. Like I have one of those, like you can see the, the vacuum seal bag right there. Like I had one of those. It's now all, all the sock here is like in one of these things now. Um, but I had, I took that downstairs and I gave them wrapping paper and tape and scissors. And I was like, please wrap up 12 packages of sock yarn for me. I like, they were like, I think some people were like, but it's your yarn. Like, won't you know what's missing? And I'm like, I have so much sock yarn. Like there are like 60 skins of sock yarn in here. I will not know what's missing. Like I might notice one or two things and be like, Ooh, that's exciting. I'll get that challenge. But like, truly there were things I thought they would wrap up that they didn't. And so I don't know what is in those packages. And so on the first of every month, they labeled them January, February, March, April. So on the first of every month, I open one and I start knitting socks and I have to work on the socks every day until they're finished. Um, and then I can't knit any more socks for the rest of the month because otherwise I burn out because I knit, I want to knit too many socks and it has to be a new design. So this is my challenge for 2024 is kind of like the one I did in 22 where I knit all the Jane Austen socks, but um, that was too crazy and I overcommitted and I knitted 45 pairs of socks that year and that was terrifying. I don't want to do that again. So I want to keep the creative spirit flowing. I don't want to get burnt out from the socks. So this is why I have a recording from last week because I opened these. <laughs> I opened the package while I recorded myself for opening the package. So I'm going to stop this and insert that video right here so you can see. Hi, I just realized that it was February 1st. So this is my little video in video of myself opening up my socks gain for the month. Um, it's like literally like, I don't know, it's 10 in the morning and I've opened up my computer to get some stuff done for a work from home day which is why I don't really like have a face on um, but I was like who cares let's just go on and open up this package so this is my February February yarn okay there's my January socks right there my Emily Dickinson socks for my friend Brianna okay are you ready Oh, it's rainbow. No, it's not. This is not the rainbow one. This is, oh, okay, but I understand why they gave this to me. This is a sock skein that I got. Experiment in color has glitter in it. Experiment in color. Due to the artisan nature of our yarn, no two skeins slash cakes will match. 75 superwash merino, 20 nylon. 5% Stellina. This is called Guilty Treasures. I got this at like, I think it was like Frederick Fiberfest or Maryland Sheep and Wool a couple years ago. They had like, I think it was Frederick, one of the Frederick. Frederick Fiberfest happens twice a year, so it's hard to remember sometimes. But I got, it was like really inexpensive. I think she was trying to get rid of her yarn and I got like three skeins and some of them have like a rainbow here. They'll be like one color and then like a little bit of it is rainbow to make micro stripes, which is really cool. So that's what this will do too. So this is obviously they, my friends picked this because it's February, so Valentine's Day. Um, or as I like to call it this year, Ash Wednesday. I'm going to be at church on Valentine's Day singing mass. <laughs> singing Allegri Miserere. Yeah. Which, if you know what that is, you are rolling your eyes also. So here we go. This is, let me just rescan this. This is fun. Ooh, I don't know what to do for this. If you have suggestions, let me know. I have, um, I have to like design socks for lots of, I'm designing socks for lots of literary characters for my friends this year. Literary characters, some of them are real people. Emily Dickinson's a real person, so it's my, I don't know. I, I have I have to decide, to decide on this. I should have decided before I opened it, but like sometimes I like to let the skein speak to me before I decide who I'm gonna base it on. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. This is gonna be, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, if you have suggestions, <laughs> drop them in the comments. <laughs> and then I'll try to connect it to someone I know so that I, I can then give them the socks. <laughs> I'll have a think, I'll have a think about it. I'll have a think. All right, well, this has been fun. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna have to cast them on today, so I have to decide, like, I shouldn't say if you have suggestions, drop them in the comments, because by the time you see this, I will be like, done the first sock, so <laughs> maybe not probably not. Um, mm, this is gonna be a fun day. Fun things to think about. Hopefully this doesn't distract me too much from my work. <laughs> okay, uh, well, 
back to my regular scheduled programming. <laughs> Bye! Okay, I just talked for like at least five minutes and was not recording. <laughs> I just realized it. Um, I'm back. I've turned on some lights because it's getting darker. Um, and uh, you've just seen my socks, my skein. So here's the socks. Um, it was a bit of a process to name these. I asked my mom and she was like, maybe Lady Macbeth. But then after I started knitting the socks, they were like kind of precious and lacy. She was like, nah, it's too pink. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to go with Maggie's suggestion of Dolly from Anna Karenina, I think. Um, which actually really fits. If you haven't read Anna Karenina, it's a long book. Um, but Dolly is definitely the heroine. Um, I don't even know if she's like in the Kira Knightley movie version. She's like not a super central character, but she's like the only person who doesn't suck, kind of. Um in the novel. So anyway, um, those are my, uh, February socks. So I've been working on those. I'm almost done with the heel on the first one. I'm gonna work on them today. I haven't worked on them today yet. Um, cause I have to work on it. This is like the rule. I have to work on it every day until they're finished and then I can't cast on any more socks the rest of the month. Um, so yeah, uh, Mary Bennett is also here. I grabbed these from downstairs while I stopped the video. Um, these are, like I was talking about them earlier, I just released this pattern. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, there we go. If you zoom in really far, you can see it's like a twisted, it's like an offset. So it's a, it like twirls around the sock. It's a broken rib, um, two by two ribs. So like every other round is just plain knitting and then you're offsetting the, the two purl two by every two. You could totally knit these toe up um, with the same chart. I have a written instructions and also the texture chart um, for this. I rate it for heel flop and gusset for 56, 64, and 72 stitches, which is a sort of traditional way to uh, present a sock pattern. Um, I used to do DK, like a, I'd make it DK, but that was just such a fuss for Jordan. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> um, you can find a pattern if you want to knit them in DK weight or use one of my other patterns and like follow the instructions for how to make the DK sock and substitute the chart if you want. Um, but... I like these. I think they're not super fussy. Mary Bennett is like, I mean, if you've ever read Pride and Prejudice or like seen any of the film adaptations, she's so annoying. She's just like constantly lecturing everybody. She's always playing the piano. She's like, <laughs> um, she's just kind of like the like person no one really wants around. Poor Mary. She's like, she's the, she's the kid in class who asks why the teacher didn't collect the homework, which I occasionally did do, maybe in middle school. Um, but you know, she's that, that, she's that character. She's annoying. So I always thought like if Mary were knitting socks, she'd want like the most plain socks ever. And her mom would be like, Mrs. Bennett would be like, no, you need, like they have to be sort of interesting. Come on. So like Mary would be okay with this, like very easy to memorize, still quite practical, not too fussy kind of texture pattern. If she were knitting socks, she might agree to this, meet her mother in the middle. Um, and yeah, this is Snowdonia. This is an undyed colorway. They don't have as many undyed colorways as they used to, but I think the one called like Toman or something is the closest you can get to this now. I got this, these two skeins in, in England last time I was there, which was almost two years ago, just at like, I don't know, Wild and Woolly or like, I don't know, what the other, Knit with Attitude or something. Um, I think they both sell Snowdonia. Um, but uh, it's great. It's a great... Um, it's a great yarn. It's well, like I said earlier, it's hundred percent wool. Um, I do have other samples that I knitted, but I don't have them. I knitted another one in a very like rusticy wool, um, in like purple and the, um, I think it was a Vermont farmer. And then the, the original sample, the one that I hand dyed was like, it was similar to this color, but it was in a yak merino base, very shiny, really soft. Um, so those were the I also actually did knit this pattern in like a thicker yarn. I knit it in Tuku sock. I gave them to Knitten because they were huge and they were orange, which is his favorite color. Um, I think a couple years ago for Christmas, I gave them to him. Um, so I knitted them ages ago and I don't have them. I mean, he has them, but I was like, th there's no like even reason to like photograph these. Like I didn't do a DK sample in the um, thing. So anyway, um, yeah, that's my sock news. And I also grabbed my scale so I can weigh my traveler cowl. Not like a bowl or anything though. It's inconvenient. Oh, is this like super long? Okay, we're gonna just break that. <laughs> uh, can I like fold it really small to fit on the scale? Probably. Okay.
okay? It weighs 113 grams. Oh, that's exactly four ounces. Well, maybe some of it is not totally resting. Okay, no, 117 of all of it. That's pretty good. 117 grams of fingering weight yarn. A lot of my skeins weigh more than 117 grams of, you know, 117 grams. So this is like definitely a good hand spun option if you, or if you just have some commercial yarn that you want to use, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but I'm always looking for things to do with my hand spun. So yeah, <laughs> other than like sell it, which I might have to do because I have so much of it. Um, sorry, I'm trying not to talk too quietly anymore or too fast. I never remember to stop talking quietly and fast. And I've been doing this for almost three years now. So that's just, I'm very committed to my brand, apparently. <laughs> okay, what else is going on? Not a lot. They think that's the bulk of it. I'm still working on the other Shetland cowl, the Natalie cowl, like I've shown you apparently already. Um, so the socks, yeah, the new cowl, I finished my, so my buttons on this, but yeah, it's just been, I've been working on the socks right now. And, um, what else am I working on? Yeah. They get the fair isle cowl, that Natalie cowl that I'm knitting for my grandma or not for my grandma. I did the first one for my grandma that I'm knitting for the as a, another picture, like, so I can have another uh, sample for the pattern for the, um, that will be released in time for the Wooly Thistle Colorwork Cow coming up in like two weeks. It's very exciting. I'm super excited about that. Um, so yeah, hopefully my sniffles go away. Um, they will be there. It is getting better. Um, no midweek mass this week. This is like the first week we had midweek mass two weeks ago. Then we had also last week. This week we don't, but then next week we have it again because it's Ash Wednesday. Next week is Ash Wednesday. Like, I snapped. I, and it was, like, I went already. Like, I don't know how it comes that fast. Because January felt extremely long. I felt like I lived six lifetimes in the month of January. Which is, like, normal. I know everyone always does every January. But, like, now here we are and I'm like, it is not let yet. It is, I mean, it's not. We still have a week and a day until it's Lent. But I'm like, oh my that is shockingly soon so a little terrified about that um I just like had my last non-double duty Sunday until Easter oh god um although it was really fun because I got to go shopping with two women from my choir um at Nordstrom Rack none of us actually bought anything we just wanted to go shopping together and it was like so nice and they listened to me talk about all my problems and I listened to them talk about all their problems too um but shout out to Chris and Simona. You guys are the homies. Uh, love Chris and Simona. They're my two moms, my two choir moms, my DC moms. And um, yeah, so I really enjoyed my last after Sunday afternoon of freedom for a while. I will, I am going to England. I actually just bought my ticket. Um, I'm going to England for spring break. I'm going to Guildford and London. Um, so like March 16th through 23rd or something. Um, so I don't have to sing that Sunday. I can spectate that Sunday at Guildford Cathedral where I will be. Um, so that's fun. Um, I go to Guildford to see my, my English mom, Catherine. I have a lot of moms. Um, excuse me. Um, Catherine, who refers to me as her personal pierogi chef. <laughs> so the way that I told her that I was coming was like, what are you doing the weekend of March 16th? And she was like, I don't know, church, cathedral stuff. And I was like, how about eating a lot of pierogies? And she was like, ah! Yes. So, um, I am, I have to fly out of Philly because it's really expensive to fly out of like DC or, or DCA or, or Dulles. And it's just like a hassle. And I had like a huge flight credit from American from when I was unable to attend my grandma's funeral last year because I had some insane upper respiratory virus. Um, not the grandma who I named the Natalie Cowell after she is 86 and doing great. Um, and will be visiting me for Easter, actually, which is exciting. Um, but um, the other one, she passed away this time last year, and I could not go to the funeral because I was very sick. And so I just, like, had to not fly. So I just, like, I canceled my trip, and I got a flight credit from American. And I was like, okay, well, next year I'll just go to England for spring break with this. And I managed to do it for, like, the flight credit and, like, $200. And I was like, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, um, 
cool. I'm very excited about that. I'm gonna, somebody asked me recently what I was gonna do in London and I was like, go to the yarn stores? Like what else would you do? Um, and like the v and I don't know, everything. My oldest friend lives in London, um, Sachi, and she who works in film. And then another one of my really good childhood friends from, from choir stuff, Anne, she also lives in London. So I will have friends to visit in London, which is super fun and exciting. And I can spend more time there. Last time I went there, uh, Sachi was living up in the Peaks, which was amazing. Um, I was the only person who ever visited her there because it was so far away and it was like really special. She was about to move to London and she was still living up in Derbyshire. And I visited her there for like three or four days and we just like rambled around, talked for four days straight because we only get to see each other when <laughs> every couple of years, usually once a year, she'll either come home or I'll go to England. But like I will, Sachi's my oldest friend. I will often schedule my trips home to see Sachi when I know she's going to be home. So, um, because it's, it's, it's worth it. Uh, people who've known you for your whole life, it is so worth it to see them and to get their take on all your drama that's happening and to just like remember who you are as a person. I think that's what Sachi does for me. That's what a lot of people like Ivy was on the podcast, uh, like a month ago, you know, and oh man, it's just the best. Like you just, people who can just like roast you for like crap that you did when you were seven or eight and like you just laugh about it and you're like, yep, that's who I am. I did that. And like, you just, oh, it's, it, it's really special to have friendships that last that long. And I feel very lucky to be 30 years old and to have friends that I've known for like almost my whole life. Um, you know, even it's funny, like now that I'm here, like I've lived in Baltimore for a couple of years now, more than two years now. And I have, I mean, Nitten lives here and we've been friends for like five and a half years or something now. Um, cause we met in grad school and Monica, I've been friends with for even longer. So I have like a couple of friends who've like here who've like with have this like longevity now and I'm like wow we haven't known each other for a really long time poor Monica she and I really saw each other at our worst <laughs> um oh yeah I was gonna talk about what I was reading and watching but I finished Anna Karenina was reading that um I've not finished Daniel Deronda yet but I'm close to the end I actually listened to Daniel Deronda when I went out for a really long run a couple weeks ago and it was great because I was like not trying to run fast it was just like a long slow run um and I listened to Daniel Deronda and it kept me really entertained while I ran loops around Fort McHenry, which is a nice place to go on a long run because the loop is one mile. So if you run there, it's two and a half miles and run back two and a half miles and you can run your loops there for however many you need to get to your mileage that you need to hit for your long training run, which for me isn't really that long because I'm only training for a half marathon, but still a lot of miles. Anyway, that's not done yet. I'm almost done with that. Um, what else am I reading? I don't think I'm reading anything else. I'm reading this book. Actually, I am. I'm reading this book at work called A Mind for Numbers um, because I basically it's my job to like teach students to be better at math and science as somebody who's not a mathematician or a scientist. Um, and it's a great book. It's all about like what you have to kind of learn how to do in order to succeed and like the resources you need to use and like, you know, the kind of willpower and the habit building and the solution finding you know, creative problem solving. It's really interesting. It's by Barbara Oakley, um, who I think is a software engineer. Um, but apparently she used to be bad at math. Uh, people like come in my office and they're like, I'm bad at math. And I'm like, you're not bad at math. Like it's my job to be like, you're not bad at math. And this is why. Um, so anyway, uh, that's a good book. I'm reading that at work. But yeah, I've, I finished watching Ted Lasso again. I love Ted Lasso. Um, and I'm watching, or I started watching Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, like last weekend and I watched like an hour and a half of it and there's still like two more hours of it that I have to watch. I like to watch all of the Academy like Best Picture nominees. Um, there's one that I'm totally not going to watch which is the one about the concentration camps because this is going to freak me out. Make me like have horrible dreams for a month. Um, I learned this the hard way in middle school when they made us watch a really really sad concentration camp movie. Um, so, but all the other ones I'm probably gonna watch. So let me know if you saw any of the best picture nominees, what was your favorite? I saw Barbie, I saw Oppenheimer and I saw Maestro so far. And obviously the first, not quite half of, maybe half, maybe I watched the first half of Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, but I am looking forward to watching the other ones. Yeah, so let me know what your favorite one was and I'll watch it. Um, yeah, I 
maybe have that we don't have midweek mass this week but it's still a busy week so um maybe not I always feel like I don't feel bad if I don't have time to watch TV. I'm like, I don't, this is like what I do if I don't have anything to do. So, um, yeah, season three of Albert Elementary is shooting soon. And I love Albert Elementary. So that's a good one. Um, that's a good one. But yeah, otherwise, we'll see what happens. And I hopefully I finish at least one of those socks in the next week and work on that fair isle cowl but i'm not working on anything that's going to be done soon unless i go great guns on those socks because sometimes i can knit socks just absolutely whip out a pair of socks if i get on a roll <laughs> but um yeah i'm also working on my guernsey still um which is not here it's downstairs but i i like wound off a ball from one of the grandy penny cones i have and i finished that first ball so there's like a good six to seven inches of like body on the guernsey and i let Mark, who it's for, I let him know that I was, like, sent him a picture. I was like, I promise I'm knitting this. <laughs> he asked me to knit it from, like, October, and I was like, he probably, like, understands it takes a long time, but, like, I am working on it, I promise. <laughs> but he was like, wow, those are really small needles when I sent him the picture, and I said, yeah, they're pretty small. It'll be a while, but it'll be really nice when it's done. So, anyway, this actually maybe is a shorter one. I don't know how long the first segment, though, was. Maybe I talked for, like, half an hour. I probably did. I look at myself. So... Here we are at the end of another episode. <laughs> Please buy my Mary Bennett sock pattern if you like knitting socks. Um, or my other ones. They're also Kitty and Jane are also there. Clearly, I'm just going to work through the Bennett sisters and Mrs. Bennett because I have patterns for all of them. And then maybe I'll do the other ones. The Jane Austen characters. You can buy my Emma Woodhouse pattern too from the Wooly Thistle if you want. That's not on Ravelry. I should just put it on Ravelry. It's not on Ravelry. But I could do that. <laughs> but I have a bunch of other samples. Um, so Jordan would need to update the photos ideally with the other samples. Although maybe it doesn't matter. I'll just put them on the Ravelry project page or the pattern page. Anyway, thank you so much for watching as always. <laughs> it is my joy to be here with you. Um, this has been Tiny Destiny with Emma. Bye.